Hello, everyone. So improved white matter response estimation for three tissue CSD. I have nothing to the close. So this is actually an improvement of our own work from a few years ago, so competing against myself a little bit. Um, the gist of that work is that we estimated three tissue response functions from the diffusion data itself. And roughly, it goes down like this. First, we have a very coarse segmentation into three tissue types, white matter, gray matter, CSF of the brain. It's completely data driven. That is then refined, and that is then refined again until we have the final sets of voxels from which we estimated three tissue response functions. And those may then look a little something like this, for instance, for multi-shell data. So the white matter is an anisotropic response function. The gray matter and the CSF are isotropic, and they all feature signal decay. If this were to be single-shell data, we may only have a single non-B0 value, and then they look like this. All right, so great, that worked, but we're going to improve it anyway. So the step we are going to improve in particular is the one that takes us from this white matter segmentation to these final blue voxels. Previously, we did that with an algorithm that worked pretty well as well, but it was only designed for a single shell, single tissue setting, and it only used the highest B value discarded all the other B values. So let's see if we can do better. So sketch, no over-interpretation, please. So don't all fly to the mic and ask me exactly what each point means. But if you imagine that all your signals in the brain, all in all the voxels, lie within this anisotropy versus signal decay or diffusivity or whatever you wish to call it, plane, then trying to find response functions means basically trying to find this little triangle here with the properties of each of these tissue types in the right spot. And we hope to find it as such that most of the signals are in the triangle, because otherwise we do not fit them well. That's the idea. How we're going to go at it this time? Well, we are going to first construct an artificial, somewhat extreme white matter response function that encodes the properties that we would really like to see in a white matter response function, but just a little bit too much. So details are in the abstract, but basically this thing is designed to have exactly zero average signal decay across all its B values and maximal possible anisotropy, so the flattest disk possible for all the non-B0 B values. And then we're going to do two tissue CSD with that one there and this one down there, which is the CSF response that we already obtained using the algorithm itself from our data itself. So basically doing two tissue CSD means projecting all the signals that supposedly live here onto this line. And the idea is the further they are up this line, the closer they are to the little holy grail that sits there that we want to find. That's the idea, just an intuition there. So this is how this goes down on data for real. So this is the step just before we're going to improve stuff. And we're going to work only on the blue part there. And first, we'll do this two tissue CSD with this extreme artificial white matter response function in the CSF one. And we will normalize the resulting ODF by the sum of those two compartments. So we have, and this is a mouthful, an extreme white matter tissue signal fraction ODF. Just this thing. So the larger these ODFs are, the more we are up that line where we want it to be. And then of these ODFs, we are going to compute the maximum peak amplitude because we're after single fiber voxels. So we wish for the energy to be con um, somehow concentrated more in one direction. So that we find via the maximum peak amplitude. Now, what I didn't tell you yet is that in this image here, I've only computed this up to Lmax2. That's because we figured that's far more robust. So from there, we get this map. And that's actually already a single fiber white matter tissue met metric itself. From that one there, we're just going to select the top 1% of this well, metric. And those voxels we are going to retest. But now we're going to do exactly the same thing, albeit at LMAX 6 to refine this a little bit. That gives us, again, a new metric. And of that, we select half of the voxels there. And then we have our final voxels. That's it. So on real data, the results are like this. Adult data of a healthy subject. Essentially, this data set is a very nice sampling of multiple shells. The results appear like this. So CSF and gray matter response, they are the same as our previous algorithm. 
so they behave as they typically should. But if you compare the white matter response from the old algorithm, so as the dark blue dots, versus the new one, the cyan one, you see the new one features less signal decay. The, the curve is basically flatter. So it optimized somehow what we wanted it to. So if we then look, if we perform multi-shell, multi-tissue CSD at the result, using the old and the new method, and we look at the root mean square error of the new one versus the old one, fraction log of that, orange means win. So we see that it improves in a lot of the voxels of the brain and in the voxels where it improves the most, the root mean square error is decreased up to 55%, so about a factor two. So if we then actually look at the quality of the multi-tissue CSD result itself, well, it looks fine, nothing wrong with that, so not much to see here, rather than just pretty ODFs, and the tissue types, they also get separated very well. Other data set, now we're moving on to a baby data set, and let's go with a single one, single shell one this time instead as well. So here the CSD will be single shell three tissue CSD, because it's only a single shell data set. So, response functions, CSF and gray matter, how you expect them to be. Old versus new white matter, quite a large difference. The old one somehow estimated something that was very akin to the gray matter one. The new one estimates something that's much more flat than that. And the impact can be seen in the areas where it improves the most. Uh, the root mean square error is decreased down to 30%, so by a factor three, that's, that's quite a lot. And that's typically in the structures that show the most hindered or most restricted um, yeah, properties. So the lowest kind of diffusivity that can now be modeled by this response function, and previously it couldn't, so this is not surprising. This has quite an impact. If your root mean square error decreases that much, some things are bound to change. So the white matter fiber density, apparent fiber density using the old response here, the contrast looks like this. And I used the jet color map just to enhance it a little bit, so be careful in interpreting that. But the new one shows quite a different contrast there, so this is quite an impact there. And the new one, it also separates the tissue types really well. Final data set of the day, Neonate data, this is downloaded from the developing HCP project. So you can find this online and download it and play around with it for yourself. So the data set here is a three day old Neonate. It's a very, very comprehensive multi-shell acquisition. And if we look at the difference here between old and new white matter response functions is actually not that much. But it still works well. It still strictly improves, albeit just a tiny, tiny bit. So only 4% off that root mean square error down to 69%. But well, it still works and it's still robust. I think that's the main, the main thing we care about. Um, if we here look at the result though, we can see that the white matter ODFs using this particular choice of tissue types and, and the CSD method um, doesn't get estimated so well. And typically the areas where we would expect crossings, well, they are missing. Why are they missing? Well, because they somehow get absorbed mostly into the gray matter-like compartment. That is just what we see here. So back to the drawing board. I don't have the time to go into the why of this, but playing around a little bit into, uh, with the signal and, and trying some strategies, we decided we were going to, well, give it a go and ditch this highest B value in particular there and this lower one over there. And then we're just stuck with single shell data and single shell three tissue CSD. And again, the response, it improves a little bit. And again, this improves a little bit, but now only in a tiny area. But finally, if here we look at the single shell three tissue CSD result, you can tell modeling things this way, we do reconstruct FODs in the crossings. So we get quite a different result. This is intriguing. The tissue types now do separate the gray matter-like tissue from the white matter pretty well, and we see that these areas, again, they do contain ODFs, but they also, also contain a large amount of CSF-like signal, which probably is free water, which makes sense because this is a neonate. So conclusion, we improved SF white matter response function estimation by leveraging a lot of properties at once. This results in a better three tissue CSD fit, and soon this will be available in MR tricks. That's it, thanks for listening, and also take a look at these two just released very neat preprints and this poster over there tomorrow morning. Thanks. <laughs>